Hey, so we're back with one more race review. This is the BBCH Classic 160, longest road race in the country. Hi, Joel. Hey, Shore, what's up? So this time we're doing the men's elite race analysis. Start yeah, together. we missed a point. Can you go back? Yeah, so we're going back to this. <laughs> That's a uh, Velo Studio. We Smart noticed boys. something coming out of their pockets. So yeah, race had, radios, dude. Yeah. Upping the game. So phones with the uh, comms on with their team car to maybe for support, but it was pretty smart move. Wish we had done that. Yeah. And uh, that's so the start of the race. So that's a big group, elite and masters, around 60 riders. Yeah. So we had heavy rain the night before, and luckily not a single drop. So as as usual, things start off slow. Ben, Charlie mm. make their way to the front. What was the rough strategy, dude? Before so going, to the race? going in, we had one plan. We marked a point on the map at which. We were to create a separation from the peloton and whoever was to be in that separation would be the race because riding with a bunch of how many people started 65 people 60 65 yeah, yeah. for on this road with the sunday traffic was like and crosswinds you crosswinds. forgot about the sorry crosswinds. forgot about that so we had 25 kilometer an hour crosswinds luckily it wasn't what it was last week which was the week before which was 35 kilometers an hour crosswinds was gusts of 75 so yeah very dangerous very sketchy but that was the idea to keep a selection of good strong riders who could ride safely and speaking about safely we come up to the chikbalapur y junction and that's me in the front making sure everybody slows down because this is a very sketchy junction it's making sure people get across safe not attacking on the after the speed breakers which we've seen happen in races yeah in other places so yeah. this is sharia's rear camera i'm just making sure everybody crosses that junction before we pick up the pace again because yeah, there's no point in someone getting hit by a car <laughs> just yeah, so that you can create a gap of five seconds, you know, just like slow down, relax, and then I say go. So safety was the number one thing, and that seems to be a topic that comes up more and more these days. Yeah, that's Vinayak from Equip Goa asking for the wheel because uh, he was taking pulls. Yeah. It was good to see in this race, anybody who was in the front and not taking pulls was giving way for people, Correct. you know. Uh, because if you're not working, then why take space? Oh, dude, we have Rick Noble. Oh, we yeah. forgot. We forgot to mention <laughs> the <Rick> Dutch Tower. <laughs> yeah. So talking about strategy, the idea going into this race was uh, make sure we, that we can find a way to beat Rick, beat Rick. Yeah. So this is at the 16 kilometer mark, and you can see I think Joel's taken a huge pull in the front, and it's a downhill section. Yeah. So none of us realize, and because see, this is where you need to have spatial awareness. So there's already a selection. There's a selection. With a lot of yeah. riders from different teams. So if I pause there we've got four guys from equip goa three guys from lbb me sharia and imu and rick uh john and emil john's the guy in the red john jersey. in the red and emil in the black uh so people like gagan dilipin shri i mean other competitive riders are not in this group things get slowed down in the front and everybody comes back together and it's super strung out so now i think we're closing in on our designated attack designated point, <laughs> point. what at what kilometer mark was so it? we decided 23 and why was it decided to be 23 because there's a sequence of three kickers that come but like the climbs is where you know it was a good place to uh, make a separation rick looks like he had a hard party last night dude. hard party <laughs> woke up early so yeah Unfortunately, we have no footage of Sharia and I attacking, but the clip before, Sharia thinks he's turning on his camera, but in fact, he's turning it off just before he goes. So yeah, yeah. still learning, still learning. <laughs> so here you see me, us coming up to this petrol bunk, make a note of this truck on the left. And then I come through to take a pull and I look back to see who's following us. And I see the orange jersey of Gagan trying to attack and bridge up. So, so the idea was to get uh, Rick into a two-on-one, three-on-one situation. Yeah. Because that's when you can beat him as a team. Yes. Or single-handedly, is going to be so super no tough. one was chasing oh, us, whoa, whoa, but whoa. noticed something <laughs> on our bikes. Something a bit mm. odd. Two bottle cages on each bike, but only one bottle each. Mm. <laughs> so that was yeah. our fatal flaw. Why? Why were we doing this? <laughs> Joel, do you have any explanation for why we See, have one bottle in for a 160 <laughs> kilometer race? In hindsight, it's one of the stupidest things you can do. But we expected to have support before the u-turn so maybe 5 km after we attacked we were supposed to get our other bottles but that didn't happen because there was uh, some miscommunication with our support crew yeah here's the bunch just coasting along nobody's gonna attack us yeah. we're all out alone they're just Gagan letting us uh, roast. Made, made a lot of try trying to bridge he, yeah uh, these are pictures by milan he's taken some amazing pictures so up ahead far down that's us 
I mean, that's not that far down. It's about 30 seconds at this point. So what they were doing was they were closing the gap in on us on the climbs because Rick was pacing every climb. But then eventually the bottle got to you. Yeah. And so I basically yeah dropped off from the dream break, <laughs> which both of us were a part of. And I had to come back and join the peloton. Just right. So this is where uh, Equip, uh, for playing very smart. First yeah. of all, their guys have two bottles. <laughs> as you can Four see. bottles. <laughs> two in the jersey, two on the bike. I mean. Yeah. And then they would slow down. <laughs> on all the uh, slow down the entire bunch on all the kickers so mm-hmm. that was me at the first u-turn with a gap of 80 seconds and then this is the bunch taking the first u-turn yeah, and first, first u-turns 44 kilometers into the race yeah that's and when rick decides to nuke it nuke it nah, actually thermo so, nuclear <laughs> <laughs> so we have a little bit of shaky footage here but this is when rick goes to the front and just picks up the pace he doesn't attack so this is information from she doesn't attack he just goes and picks up the pace and nobody follows his wheel which is the weirdest well, we can thing see to vincent do trying to yeah vincent tries but rick is doing 500 odd watts continuously at the front no one's closing that down you're gonna have to attack and bridge across which is what she does and then you see anise in the white with you on his wheel and the last man sudev with the white helmet and that was the break. Yeah, I have no idea how... Uh, like, Sudev did a massive pull. Yeah. You remember? Sudev's the same guy from that Vyanard race. <laughs> the man who emptied himself yeah. to try uh, and beat you. But, yeah. yeah, so then that's it. This is... Uh, this, this is the point where you see everybody shattered. <laughs> yeah, this is a peloton this now. This is post-attack. Everybody's, like, realized that you got to make do with whatever's left over now. Yeah. So now this is at the point where I finally see our support crew and they're standing on the side of the road. So I tell them, get in the car and come, get in the car and come. Get in the car and come, get in the car and come. But they don't because the motor has just told them that right. the at Rick this, group is coming. At this point of time, how many riders are up there on the road now? So it's just me out ahead, Rose with now the the main four protagonists here we've got Srinath Anis Rick and the man Sudev our man Rocky Rocky <laughs> Rocky's eating a gel right now <laughs> Sudev yeah so basically if you were to look at this and say okay Joel's up ahead why is Srinath the one pacing I had the same thought so I called Sri and asked him and he told me that basically the idea was for safety because Sudev had made a extremely hard bridge across and was out of it and he couldn't take any pulls. So Srinath decided, okay, you know what, let's keep this group away. And so he's not actually, yeah, he's not chasing me down. That's probably a situation where you can actually get two exactly. on one. Exactly. So it's a two on one situation. So It's actually a it, four on one situation. <laughs> if you really think if about it. If you really it. think about it, yeah. Because Sudev is Sri's student and Ani is Sri's friend. So yeah, it's a four on one situation. So it's in everyone's best interest that except Ricks that you know the group comes together so that's the break for the day oh we got uh, two wind space bikes two LBB riders and one uh, Dutch engine so yeah <laughs> finally emptying oh, out my <laughs> I see <laughs> empty bottle I've written for 30k it's a little difficult trying to get feed but eventually happened Leander's a little off uh, with his driving <laughs> because he has a motorbike now so he's forgotten how to drive a car <laughs> so yeah so this was the group so what we did was we rotated smooth turns Sri and Anis would take the climbs and then Rick and I would take the descents and so they would come in whenever he could so we tried to keep reshuffling it in a way that favored Shri and I in terms of draft. So I would go to the back or skip a turn yeah. and try right. and get myself onto Rick's wheel yes. and Shri would do the same to get onto my wheel. But Rick was outplaying us. So he That's would... That's his experience. Yeah, dude. exactly. You so can he see would... He's nicely sitting behind your fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> so he would reshuffle it again so that he was not on Shri's wheel because if you're on Shri's wheel you're getting zero draft. I mean the man's a two egg guy. Oh, who's this guy? <laughs> I wonder what is happening here. So at this yeah, point, let's just forget. Let's not. Let's not look at me. Please go ahead. At this point, the peloton. I mean, the break is around 16 minutes ahead, and uh, yeah, race race over. I guess for you. Um, yeah, I didn't even finish. So yeah, back to the breakaway group. And so if we were to look at a couple of pictures, the wind is coming over our left shoulder. So we're fanned out towards the right of the road, and the person. This is on after the first U-turn. After the after the second U-turn. Second U-turn. After the so the wind's meter. coming in from the left. From the left, from the Nandi side. Right. And the person who finishes that turn pulls off off the left and comes and joins on the right, which is the perfect way to ride in an echelon because everybody <laughs> rides behind each other in crosswinds, which is the weirdest thing ever. And this is more footage of the our, chase uh, group. The chase, the peloton. At yeah. this point, they're a solid eight minutes down. They're not technically chasing because they're not going to uh, catch right. at the pace that uh, Shri and Rick are motoring at. So this is after the second U turn. 
second you turn so you've done how many kilometers so i've now? done about 115 kilometers i got popped at 100 <laughs> and i just sort of rode slowly so this is that long descent just before i u turn right the is this even a race what is happening <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just chilling at this point trying to get some food in trying to get water and trying to make up for all that i didn't do in the first 50 kilometers you ran out of water shorya ran out of water don't be so scared you fucker right next to me you were sure who ran out of water Shorya said he ran out of water yeah we both did telling lee to <laughs> ride closer to me but yeah just telling the guys that i got popped and uh, didn't get any water and so that's why yeah i wasn't going to dnf this but i was just going to ride at my own pace and try and uh, wait for the group to come this is the boys checking on rick and just listen to what he wants chill oh there <laughs> A joint? Funny guy, dude. Like he, it's nice to see people I mean, not taking racing exactly. so seriously, and Absolute you know, but still um, competitive, eager to win, but still fun. Hey, so this is a point where I think Rick and Shri dropped the other two riders yes, who were did. probably sandbagging at Correct. this point in time, uh, and we're closing in on the finish. I think now it's uh, maybe twenty odd k's to go. Twenty odd k's to go. Good time to refuel. So this is just before the Chikbalapur. Why you can just see from the road. Right now, though, if the winner is going to come from. From both of these guys we've got like some statistics on both the riders yeah so, <laughs> and <laughs> so let's just look at this frame this is the last flyover before the two lumps to the finish like look at these statistics here right so sheena it's a an ftp of around 250 to 260 watts yeah. with a weight of 53 kilos whereas rick's at an ftp of let's say 370 yeah. 380 watts with a weight of 75 kilos given rick's experience with racing he knows not to attack shri on a climb yeah. right that's the stupidest thing to do if you're in indian cycling do not attack shri when you see a positive gradient if, right. but if the road is about to go down that might be a good time to attack which is what rick does so this is towards the end of the flyover rick throws down a 20 second at 800 watts attack. it's not a sprint this isn't it isn't rick's sprint it's an attack 20 seconds at 800 watts on a flatter road yeah uh 20 seconds at 800 watts would be your last sprint bit sprint like you know if you sprint for a finish yeah. for, for his body given his body weight yeah. yeah just just before the flyover starts going down right she's almost on his wheel but once the road starts going down going he's got down. no chance so that's uh gravity for you heavier guy Rick's at 75 kilos. They have a 22 kilo gap between them. And a 120 <laughs> watt difference. So <laughs> That's pretty much what you see here yeah. happen now. It's not that she's weak or toast at this point. It's just she can't put out the power that Rick is putting out on a descent. Right. It's just... What goes up goes down impossible. probably faster. Yeah. <laughs> And that's it. That's the race. So Rick attacks Shri with two and a half k to right. go. And, uh, and once he has the separation, you see um, Rick just like for him oh, coasts yeah, off to yeah. three hundred watts. <laughs> 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 that's Shri finishing. He's got a good sprint, uh, Shri. For his weight, he's got yeah. a very good sprint. And especially when the finish was slightly uphill, yeah. it would have been interesting if and both of them I think had another a... reason why Rick didn't take it to a sprint was there is a headwind. So if it was to go to a sprint, Shri could just sit in Rick's wind, get all the shelter, and then sprint across. Right. Yeah. So big up to Sudev again, who uh, finished third. Finished yeah, wow. Third. <laughs> Let's look at Rick's stats from this race. He normalized for four hours. 287 watts oh wow <laughs> which is ridiculous yeah at least uh, it's good to see he's uh, getting some hard racing competition here in india yep south india <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to other races. Uh that's all. Signing off. Bye.